Amen. How y'all doing this morning? All right. We all are blessed and highly favored and deeply loved by God Almighty. Amen? Amen. Okay, I'm going to do the announcements. Um, today, Brother Eugene Randleson is bringing the word today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Um, weekdays. We have Sunday morning worship that will be starting. Is it going to be 9 to 9 30? Sunday morning is 9 30. Uh, we'll be starting soon at 9 30. We have. Oh, I need some more ink. We have new members class. It's starting today, the new one. Yes. We have the new one that's starting today, immediately following service. And those of you that want to get groceries, you can. We have clothing giveaway today also. We have uh, adult Sunday school every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. We have Bible study throughout the week. On Mondays, we have 6.30, Brother Gary. Don't get started to me. That's going to get started back pretty soon, very, very soon. And he's also, yeah. Brother Gary also does the Sunday school and the new members class, okay? Uh, we have Tuesdays and Thursdays. It says Tony Stallworth, mm -hmm. Pastor Tony, but I believe Eugene does it on Thursdays. Yeah. And yep. on Wednesdays, Gregory. Uh, Tuesday, yeah, Tuesdays, Dave do it, right? Yeah. Tuesdays is Dave, Wednesdays Monday. is Brother Gregory, Gregory. Gregory. Uh, Brother Eugene, Thursdays and Fridays, we have uh, Open Door Ministry. Who does Bible study on Friday? Dave. Okay, and Dave does it on Friday. Also, our Leadership class has started back Thursday nights, every Thursday night at 6.30. Those of you that uh, choose to be in leadership, that is a must-do a must do class. Uh, Sister Geraldine is uh, facilitating that class. Okay, and we have Friday Night Live. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah, Friday Night Live with Sister Geraldine and, and her crew. And um, all the other evangelists and ministers that, that are brought in on that at that time. We also have seven, and it starts at seven, and it also starts at seven on Sundays. That, yes, Sunday nights. Amen. Hallelujah. God is doing some great things in the house of God, in the house of the Lord. And I I hope we all are able to participate. God bless you all. Sister Jordan. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. How is everyone doing? It's beautiful. Isn't it a beautiful Sunday morning? Amen. And I'm just going to fill it in for Sister Lucy with the opening prayer. Uh, let us all bow our heads. Dear Father God, we come before your throne. Dear God, we just thank you just for waking us up this morning. Thank you for seeing us through the night, dear God, safely. And Father, I just pray for each and every one that is seeking you first this morning by being here early morning, giving you the praise and the glory just with their presence, dear God. Father, I just pray for each and every one that is in the house. God, you know the needs of all your people. And I just ask, Father God, that you just be a need meter this morning, that you just meet the needs of each and every one. And Father, we come to give glory and honor unto you. We're setting aside all of our needs, God. And we just come to give you praise because, Father, you're good all by yourself. You're God all by yourself. And you're worthy to be praised, dear God. So we come this morning just offering up praises unto you, giving you glory and honor, thanking you for all that you've done, thanking you for all that you're doing, God. And, Father, we thank you for all that you're about to do. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but, Father, we're excited about it because we know we're already on the winning team. We're on the team, God, that has already won, God. And so, Father, as we get our lives and as we align our lives and our living and our hearts and our worship with your word, dear God, I just pray blessings on everyone here today. I pray blessings upon blessings upon blessings as we give you praise, as the praise go up, God. Good. We thank you that you're bringing the blessings down. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Let all that agree with that prayer. Say amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. 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 
go right on into worship. We're going to go right on into worship, amen, uh, and give God some praise on this morning, amen, because God, you know, God is worthy of all praises, amen? Amen. amen. God is worthy of all praises. Testing. Testing. Praise the name of the Lord. I like this one better. Woo! They can hear me across the street with this one. <laughs> Y'all come on this side. Come on in the truck. Come on. I'm going to turn this down. Is this better? A little better? It's still loud. Oh, well. They can hear us across the street. Turn the speaker away. Speakers away from it. All right. How many came to praise God this morning? Okay. Right. If y'all not ready to praise God, can you guys watch me praise God this morning? Because I can praise God all by myself. I don't need another reason but that he woke me up this morning. Amen? Amen. So as we praise God, if you don't want to praise him, will you watch us praise God? Okay. Let's start with a little light. Ooh, this one is loud. Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. That's good. Is that can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Listen. Yeah. Yeah. Look, but there, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just got to make sure they can hear you across the street. Yeah! <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh.
to dance in church. Amen? Amen. We need to go back to the days of old. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when you really realize that all we ever needed is God in our lives. Amen? Every problem we have is because we need God. Amen? So how many know that he's all we need? If you got God, you got everything you need. Amen? Right. Right. Amen. Right. Praise his holy name. We're getting ready to do it. Come on, put those hands in Because he's all we need. Hallelujah. He's all we need. Come on, if you know it, will you help us sing? It's a simple song that says,
I love about God. God knows we can't do it without him. He know we need him. Amen. How many know that? For the Lord on our side, none of us would be here today. Amen. Amen. We thank God for the new song, but we thank God for the old songs too. That's right. That's right. If y'all didn't know those new songs, we don't see if you know this one right here.
stand against the king? Who can stand against the king? No one. No one can. No one can. No one will. No one will. Say oh. 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 Thank you. 
everyone's heart to take better care of this world. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You don't need our help, Father, but we need to give it to you anyway because we need to show you, Lord, that we're caring and we're trying. We want a more beautiful world. We want to restore the, the streets to cleanliness and all the trash from everywhere. And Lord, I pray, we lift up a special prayer for the homeless in this community. Yes, Lord. All the tents, all the all the people sleeping on the street. I think the lucky ones have the tents. I see people laying there without even a piece of cardboard under them. They just fall asleep right there on the concrete. Lord, it is, it's such a pitiful situation. So Lord, we ask for blessings. We ask that you look down upon your people. And give us blessings. Give us blessings. We need your blessing. We need your help. Yes, Lord. Lord, we need you each and every day of our lives. Yes, Lord. Give us strength. Yes, Lord. Keep us in good health. Yes, Lord. And Father, as one last line that I borrowed from another prayer I heard a while back. But we don't know how many beats we have left in our heart, Father. Yes, only Lord. you know. Only you know. So Lord, we pray as a, as a family. We pray that if today's to be our last day, Heavenly Father, make it our best day. Yes, Lord. Jesus, precious name we pray. Amen. 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 church say amen. 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 It is offering time. It is offering time. Amen. amen. God loves a cheerful giver. I'll say, I'll say this every week until you guys get it into your spirit. Because when God blesses us, don't we shout hallelujah when we're blessed? Amen. Well, we need to shout hallelujah when we're giving. Amen. Right. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Amen. Amen. And if you know God is a giver and he's a rewarder of those who, who serve him and obey his word, the Bible says that, that we're to give. Amen. Amen. And so this is our time of giving. Giving is worship. We are coming to worship God with our tithe and with our offering. And as we uh, uh, give our tithes and our offering, we are going to sing, Great is thy mercy. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. His mercy is great.
but you let it shine, God. And Father, we just say thank you for one reason, because you're God all by yourself, and you're good, and you're still good. Yes, so Father, we just say thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Let all that agree with that prayer say amen. 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 
one last song that we would like to share. And this is a song that we did last week. Amen. We got rave reviews for the beauty and the power of this song. And, and the song just simply asks God to order our steps. Amen. 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 If you need God's guidance, and if you need him to lead you, you know, God ain't going to make us do nothing. If God was going to make us do something, he would make us love one another. Amen. He would make us tithe. Amen. Amen. But God wants you to ask him to lead you and guide you. And if you want God to order your step, do you know all you ever have to do is ask? No matter what situation you're going through in life, God will lead you and he will guide you if you ask him to. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Praise your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. I know some of you know this song. So will you help us sing it?
just kicking it and thinking about uh, Pastor Tony as he called me to bring the message. And uh, I said to myself, I said, man, I said, he sure gave me a little bit of time to get ready. Uh, that's what I said. I ain't gonna lie, you know, when Pastor Tony called me. I realized that I only had a, a couple of days to prepare. Then I remembered that it's not about me. That's right. But it's about answering the call. That's right. That's when I recall God's word saying this in 2 Timothy uh, verses chapter 4, verse 2. God said, preach the word. Amen. He said, be instant in season and out in season. That's right. Amen. He said, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. God said, be ready. God said, anytime I call, you be ready. Amen. Anytime you are going to be called, be ready. God Amen. said, when I call you, don't worry, because I got you. Yes, sir. This is what God said to us. Be ready. Brothers and sisters, we must come to the reality that it's not about us. It's not about us. But it's about hearing the call. It's about answering the call. It's about standing up for the call. We should not allow ourselves to become incoherent to the call. It creates confusion and misunderstanding. And our God is not in the midst of confusion. Sometimes when he comes, we say, who am I? This is the normal response of uh, most people who are called by God. In our own minds, we begin to ask questions. Why? Who is calling me? Why is this voice calling me? What are we questioning? The idea of being called or the call? Do we question our worthiness? Do we question our ability? What we must do is come to the reality that it's not just a call, but it's God calling. Amen. And when God calls, it's not just a call. You have been chosen. Praise the Lord. You have been chosen. Brothers and sisters, the title of my message today that God gave to me is to call. Coming out of Acts, chapter 9, verses 3, verses 6. And the word of God read and said, as he journeyed to my Paul, he was Saul then. He came near Damascus and suddenly there shone round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. Whom thou persecuted, it is hard for thee to kick against the gold. And he, trembling, anonymously said, Lord, what would I have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee. See, when God called you, look what Paul did. You have to understand, ain't nothing wrong with questions. See, when God called you, he said, who are thou? That's what he said. Who are thou? And Christ had no problem saying, I'm Jesus. I'm the one who you persecute. And when he said that, the first thing Paul said was something we all should say. What will you have me do? What will you have me do? Oh, 
And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the city, and you shall be told thee what thou must do. See, there's nothing wrong with you. When you question the call God expected, God himself wants us to be sure of the decisions that we make. In Matthew, verse 22, 14, the Bible says, many are called, but few are chosen. To understand whether you are called or chosen, you must first answer the call. I said to understand whether you are called or chosen, you must first answer the call. We are encouraged by the word of God to question the call. In the book of 1 John 4, 1, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. God tells us, question the spirit. Be sure in the spirit that you are acknowledging is a God. All spirits are not from God. This is what God is telling us. You can be led by a spirit that's not of God. This is the purpose that you question the spirit. The word of God is encouraging us to test the spirit. We have been informed that there is false prophets lurking to misguide you. Amen. False prophets do not represent a work for our Father or our God. That's right. They have their own Father who is Satan. They have their own Father who is Satan. Every liar every sinner, every lust of the flesh a tomb of Satan. In John 8, 44, the word of God says, you are of your father, the devil, and the desire of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speak a lie, he speaks from his own resource. For he is a liar and the father of it. That's right. Come on. Satan and all of his followers have their own agenda. They will do whatever it takes to turn you against your heavenly father. In John 10, 10, it says that the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus said this, he said, but I come that thou might have life and thou might have it more abundantly. We have to understand that the Bible tells God said, I give you life and I give you death. He said, but I prefer that you choose life. We have to choose God's way. And we have to test the spirits to know that we are being led according to the holiness of our God. We cannot follow any spirit or every spirit that comes towards us. It is very important that we are led by the righteous spirit. Amen. We owe it to ourselves to test for the truth. Yes, sir. First Thessalonians 5, 21 and 22 said, test, approve all things. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. root word probare 
being to test a proof worthiness. It comes from the Greek word aprotikano, means demonstration, evidence, establish, bear witness. You see, God does not want you to just act when you hear a voice. He wants you to know the voice that you are hearing. Because when you know who's calling you, it automatically gives you a sense of trust, peace, and direction. God don't want us to just act. Any voice that calls us, anyone that calls you, anyone that calls your name, don't assume that it's God. Test the spirit as the word tells us. So we can know who we are about to serve. And I don't want to serve Satan. Anybody in here want to serve Satan? No. I don't want to serve the devil. I don't want to do the will of the devil. I want to do the will of God. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. He said, I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Jesus said to each and every one of us, everyone who have chosen that path of righteousness, Everyone that chose him as Lord and Savior. Everyone that chose him as a shepherd over the flock. He said, my people know me. Jesus said, my people know me. They know my voice. When I speak, they know who it is. They know my voice. This is what Jesus is saying. He said, there is an unbreakable bond between me and my people. He said, me and my sheep. There is trust between us. When I call, they run to me. Amen. Jesus said, when I talk, my sheep run to me. Amen. My sheep run at me. My sheep run towards me. My Amen. sheep come up to where I'm at, you know. Where I can just wrap my arms around them and hold them and let them know that they are saved. Uh, and let them know that Satan has no power. That Satan cannot take nothing from me. That everything my father called to me belongs to me. This is what Jesus is saying. You see, when you know the voice that's calling you, you know whether to acknowledge it. You know whether to trust it. You know whether to follow it. You know if it's good or evil. You know if it is worth it. You know these things already. I. car go see what's going on you know they always do that they choose the day to come and tow people tow, tow, tow people cars away you know they sit out there for months on top of months and they don't bother them all of a sudden they come in and start taking them stone sit up stone sit up you know ain't nobody was safe ain't nobody was safe trying to mess with this service Satan got him coming here. Oh, your car gets too old. Satan got, got him running in here. Come on, let's, let's, let's disturb what this pastor's saying in here because he, he's preaching the word of God. And he, he letting us know. Hey, don't, let, don't let Satan get to you. Huh? Huh? Don't follow Satan. Don't follow the lies. Don't follow the evil. Do not 
Do not, because you have already through Christ Jesus accomplished and won the battle. You have already won the battle. Huh? Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, he said, Behold, he said, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. You got power when you are called on Jesus. You got power when you're walking with Jesus. You got power when you're standing in the righteousness of God. You got power when the light is shining down on you. You got power. You got power. Acknowledge it. Know it. Use it. Use it. When you answer God's call, you open the door that cannot be closed. You can feel the power you endure. You can feel the love that surrounds you. You can feel the peace that surpasses all understanding. You can feel the joy of the Lord. Amen. When you stand in God's word, no one can take you. No one can take you. No one. They can kill the body, but they can't kill the soul. Amen. Our spirit belongs to God. Amen. And we know already that one day we're going to die. We know that. But if you're walking with Jesus now, after death, you're going to be walking with him again. Because Brother Gary was just saying this morning in the class, he said, there's a new city is coming down from heaven. Amen. A new Jerusalem yeah. is coming down. Huh? Oh. Where you don't have no more sin. Huh? Where you have peace, love, joy, faithfulness, understanding, all the things of the righteous spirit. Let's look at some of the Old Testament patriarchs and how God formed relationships. You see, when we look at Adam and Eve, we, we look at them, the first thing we realize is God made them in his own image. Amen. After his own life. Now we know that God is holy. Huh? Yes. God is pure. God is without sin. And when God made them, there was no sin. He made them pure and holy. They was in his image and his likeness. God blessed them. He told them to be fruitful, multiply. God gave them power over all the land. All the animals, all the fish, all the birds. There was nothing on earth greater than Adam and his wife. When God called, all Adam had to say is, yes, Father. Amen. Uh, when Adam was in the garden walking around, God would walk with him because the garden was made of holy ground. Amen. If it ain't holy, God is not going to touch it. He's not going to walk in it. Huh? We have to think about these things. Think about that. And how it works. God didn't take that memory from us. He didn't take that thought from us. Because he wants us to be told and to remember the way it was supposed to be 
compared to the way it is today. And he wants us to know that when we choose him, when we choose to walk in the anointing of his Holy Spirit, when we choose to walk in righteousness, Amen. he's walking right next to us. Amen. He's walking right with us. Amen. He's right there. So you see, Adam had everything. Of course, he blew it. Like many of us in here, right? There was a time we had a lot going on, and then we blew it. God gave it to us, we throw it away. Yeah, amen. Amen? amen? But it's okay. 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 Because, see, God is a God of love. Amen. He don't know nothing else but love. Amen. And even though we fall down, he got the door open and said, get up. Come on in. Um, get up. Repent. Come on in. Look at the relationship of Noah with the father. He was just, God said, Noah was a just man. God said he was a perfect man. And God walked with Noah. The Bible tells us that God walked with Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 9. Start at verse 9. You can read. He said, God walked with Noah. That's what the Bible tells us. Do you know how we feel today? God's spirit might be walking with us because Without faith in him, I believe. But at that time, they could see God. God could see them. If they was walking with him, at that time, if God walked with them, he talked about in his image and his character. Because they was considered just, righteous without sin at that time. But we know that it was all because of God. Because the Bible says that we all have sinned. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fall short. Amen. And the only one that can purify you is God himself. Jesus Christ. The only one. See, so he said, no, it was a just man. He was a perfect man. And God walked with Noah. God called Noah to a task of building an ark. And God supplied all the needs and instructions for Noah. Because of Noah obeying and answering God's call. Because of Noah obedience and following the commandment. Not only was Noah blessed, hmm? think about this. His whole family was blessed. Amen. Not only was Noah blessed, when God closed the doors on that ark, it wasn't Noah and his wife. It was Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wife. All of Noah's family was blessed. Amen. Amen. Just let you know that when God called you and you answer that call, when you answer that call, you acknowledge God for who he is. You just acknowledge him. And when you acknowledge him, he acknowledges you. Yeah, come on, Jeremy. He acknowledges you. Yes, he does. And when he acknowledged you, guess what? Nothing. 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 No power on this earth can snatch you. No power can touch you. You see, when we look at Job, we look back and say, Job went into the heavenly ring. And God looked at Job and he said, where have you been? 
He said, to and fro, back and forth. He said, but have you considered my servant, Job? Job said, why did I say consider him? He said, you got power all around him. I can't touch him. Huh? God showed him who he was. God said, I don't take all that power away. He said, you can do what you want, but uh, you can't take his life. You can do what you want, but you can't take his life. And after all he did to Job, his wife said, man, told him, why don't you just curse God and die? Job looked at her, woman, are you crazy? Huh? You think that I'm going to curse the creator of heaven and earth, the almighty God, the Father, do you think I'm going to curse him? Woman, praise him. You ain't got good sense. I'm not going to follow that command. And after everything he lost, God blessed him tenfold. Of everything that he had, it was replaced. It's the same thing that God do to you. You, you, you. It's what God do for you. Amen. When you put him first, when you acknowledge him first, when you show love towards him that he shows towards you. If you can show God the same love that he shows you, that's a relationship with a bond that cannot be broken. Amen. 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 Remember that. It's a blessing to be a servant of the mighty God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you today, there's a call on your life. There's a call Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling Amen. and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stop. There's a call on your life. Amen. There's a call. In 1 Peter 2.9, the word of God says, you are chosen race, our generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty act of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. There's a call on your life. And as I said earlier, God said, I placed before you life and death. He said, I prefer to right now. Right now. And God has placed it before you life Amen. and death. In Luke 5 33, and I'm going to close with this. The word of God says this I have not come to call the righteous. But the sinners. Amen, Lord. But the sinners. Lord, Lord. I have not come to call the righteous. But the sinners to repentance. Ladies and gentlemen, the title of the message today is The Call. And the call.
There's some laborers in the house. There's some servants in the house. Amen. Come on, let's thank God for that beautiful word on today. This is the part where you get an opportunity to respond to the, the call of God. Because while he was preaching, you know the word of God does not return void. Right. Somebody's heart has got touched today. Amen. Somebody's been touched by God today. Amen. Amen. So all God wants us to do is to respond to his love. Respond to the call. Amen. Amen. All you got, all God is waiting for is yes. All God wants us wants from us is yes. Uh, isn't that what we want from God? Amen. Yes. Well, God is waiting for your yes, because he will not override your will. So when you tell God yes, how many know God is ready to tell you yes? Amen. So the call Amen. is this. That's right. If there's someone under the sound of my voice, right. yes. if you've never said yes to Jesus, in order to get to God, you got to go through Christ. He's the one that paid the price, and he's the one that did it right. Amen. So if you want Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior, isn't this a beautiful day to say yes to Christ? Can you please come to the altar? This is the altar call, and I believe that there's one. Who's the one that will say yes to the Lord of today? Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. We got all day. Who's the one? If you feel God tugging at your heart, you're the one. Come forward if you're not ashamed. If you don't want to come forward, if you just want to stand, you can stand at your seat. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand praise. Amen. Come on, let's give him another hand praise. Hallelujah. The Lord of God does not return the Lord. Amen. Amen. The other call is this. You may have already asked him to be your servant, your savior, his girl. You may have already asked him to, to, to be your Lord. Amen. If there's someone under the sound of my voice, you may have walked away from God. Who would like to come back to God on today? God has been waiting for you. Is there someone that would like to come back? Please stand or you can come forward. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're getting ready to say the prayer that we call the sinner's prayer. That's the prayer that God does here. Sinner prayer. Amen. Amen. And so as we say this prayer, even if you're in your seat, even if you haven't stood up or raised your hand or stood or, or, or kept forward, you can still get in on the altar call because Romans 10, 9 says you got to confess it with your mouth. Be sincere in your heart that Jesus died for your sin and that he rose again on the third day. If you believe that, then you can receive that. Amen? Amen. So as we pray and you want to get in on it, all you have to do is pray. Let's pray. Dear God, God. Forgive me of all my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe Jesus died for my sin. I want him to be my Lord and my Savior. Holy Spirit, fill me with your power. Lead me, guide me, order my steps. Satan, I rebuke you. From this day forward, I serve you no more. I put you under my feet in Jesus' name. Dear God, heal me, deliver me, set me free. In Jesus' name I pray.